I faced myself, Hazel, and I don't like what I see. I'm selfish, I'm rude, I'm overbearing, I'm inconsiderate, I'm a self-centered egomaniac. Well, we can't all be perfect. It's true. Nobody loves me. Oh, come on now, Mr. Griffin. You're crying in my cake batter. Here, I'll get you a glass of water. Hey! Hey! You wear long underwear! Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I, I didn't mean to be so abandoned. Have you got any suits you ain't using? Uh, well, I, I only wear one at a time. I'll tell you why I need them. Hello, uh, Jerry? Uh, George Baxter? Uh, listen, Jer, uh, psychoanalysis is kind of a hobby of yours, isn't it? Mm, well, uh, this friend of mine uh, got into kind of a business hassle and... Uh, well, a big quarrel, and then he began to see sheep, and S-H-E-E-P, uh, actually a, a, a little lamb, and then from time to time he thought he heard a little ba. Oh? Oh, really? Sheep are the symbol of peace of mind? <laughs> well, this friend of mine is certainly going to be glad to hear that. With the cold weather coming on, them sheep a lot will be in trouble. And if Laurie loses them sheep, she won't be able to go to art school. Well? Rosie and me ain't told her because we don't want her to get upset before the tests. Or whatever it is they give at that art school. That's very commendable of you and Rosie. Oh, sure. Good Samaritans. That's us all over. The only thing is, in freezing weather, it ain't the easiest thing to get people to fork over their long underwear. Hazel, I'm a businessman. And in business, we scratch one another's back. I'll make a deal with you. If you'll help me, I'll help you. Well, what can I do for you? Get George Baxter to take me back as a client. Oh, no. No, I'd never be able to do that. He was so happy at breaking with you, he was practically doing a Highland fling. If he takes me back, I'll pay for everything those sheep need. And I don't mean secondhand cast off sweaters and unmentionables. Brand new from the most fashionable store in town. No kidding. You mean brand new high style long johns? Yeah. It's a deal. <laughs> Mr. B. Mr. B. Yes? Mr. Griffin is out in the kitchen with all them wonderful presents. He can't bribe his way back into this house. Well, uh, Mr. Griffin... Don't ever mention his name again in my presence. But, Mr. B., you, you're a lawyer, you know, and you've got a respect for a contract. Now, if he was to sign a contract promising to keep out of your hair... I don't wish to discuss it. We ain't discussing it. I'm just telling you. And, and if you'll just listen to how sorry he is, and then if you still... Mr. B., Mr. B., what are you looking for? This is what I'm looking for. I'm going out to the driving range. Gotta let off steam somewhere. Mr. B, won't you take Mr. Griffin back as a client? Uh, will you listen to her, George? She's even willing to soundtrack, humiliating as it uh, is. George, please listen Mr. to B, her. I, I drew up the contract myself because I know all the things you object to. Please, George. Hazel, if you don't get from behind me, you're fired. Uh, she, she's our maid. I would really fire her. But you see, I have to say things like this to her every once in a while to get her to mind her own business. One must be firm with servants. Oh, yes. That's the only way. Well, I... I, uh, I have to get another bucket of balls. You said just not to get behind you. We ain't behind you. George, will you look at the contract? Hazel drew it up and I signed it. Party of the first part, that's me, agrees to stay out of your hair, to respect your privacy.